This is the main entrance of the Forbidden City, a popular spot for taking photos. Let's start by lining up here to check our tickets and go inside. Hi everyone! Today I'm at the Forbidden City. Right behind me is the main entrance of the Forbidden City called the Meridian Gate. Look, there are three gateways here. Let's enter through the middle gateway now. We are now on the Imperial Way, a path once reserved only for the Emperor. The Empress could only walk here once in her lifetime on her wedding day. Additionally, the top three scholars from the national exams were allowed to walk this path just once after their first meeting with the Emperor. No one else had the right to walk here. Today, we can walk freely along this path. Before we explore the Forbidden City, let's get a brief overview of its basics and the layout. The Forbidden City in Beijing was the imperial palace during the Ming and the Qing dynasties. It was the emperor's residence and a restricted area for common people, has the name Forbidden City, located at the center of Beijing's central axis. It was built in 1420 and has been standing for over 600 years. We enter the Forbidden City through the Meridian Gate, facing the Golden Water River, the palace's protective moat. The central southern area of the Forbidden City was the Emperor's reception area, primarily used for grand national ceremonies. The southwest section housed the royal printing area, while the southeast section was for storing books. The central northern area serving as the nominal living and working space for the emperor and empress. The northernmost end of the central axis is the imperial garden. Close to the central axis, there are six palaces on each side, known as the east and the west six palaces, where the emperor's consorts lived. Source of the West Six Palaces, starting from Emperor Yongzheng of the Qing Dynasty, became the Emperor's sleeping quarters. Source of the East Six Palaces was the Royal Ancestral Temple. The Northwest area was for the Dowager Empresses and the Consort's retirement, and the Northeast was built by Emperor Qianlong as his retirement area slightly south of which was the living area for the princess. The Forbidden City covers an area of 720,000 square meters with 8,707 rooms. This is a square inside the Meridian Gate. Here is the Golden Water River, the moat of the Forbidden City. The bridge over the river is called the Golden Water Bridge. Now let's walk across the Golden Water Bridge. Beyond the Jinshui Bridge, so we can see this building. It's called uh, Tai He Men in Chinese. This is the Gate of Supreme Harmony, which serves as the front entrance to the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Although it's called a gate, it actually functions as a palace. This palace played a more significant role during the Ming Dynasty than in the Qing Dynasty. Ming emperors used to conduct state affairs and even held several coronations here. The bronze lines symbolize the supreme authority of the emperor and are tasked with guarding the palace and warding off evil. These are the largest pair in the Forbidden City. This is the floor plan of the Forbidden City. The dark colored areas are currently not open to the public. Now let's pass through this gate and we will come to the largest square in the Forbidden City. Oh, 
look at the size of this square. This is the Hall of Supreme Harmony Square, the largest square in the Forbidden City, spanning over 30,000 square meters. It is often the site of significant national ceremonies. The dragons called here are symbols of supreme power. The main building in the center is the Hall of Supreme Harmony, also known as the Supreme Golden Hall. It is the largest and most important hall in the Forbidden City, and the largest and highest ranking of China's existing ancient buildings. It symbolizes the supreme power of the Forbidden City and has witnessed many major historical events, marking the rise, decline, and the renewal of China. There are also dragon patterns here. To protect the artifacts inside, we can only take a look from the doorway now. Let's come over here and take a look down below. Wow, this is the Emperor's perspective. In the past, the Emperor could stand here and overlook his ministers. <laughs> Let's head to the next palace. There's two palaces here. The smaller one in front is the Hall of Central Harmony, and the larger one behind is the Hall of Preserving Harmony. Let's first take a look at the Hall of Central Harmony. Before grand ceremonies in the Hall of Supreme Harmony, the Emperor would wait in the Hall of Central Harmony. When it was time for him to appear, he would then move from here to the Hall of Supreme Harmony. Right behind the Hall of Central Harmony is the Hall of Preserving Harmony. This hall has had many uses. It once served as a venue for the highest level imperial examinations. It was also where the emperor would change his attire before grand ceremonies, and it hosted several important banquets. The Hall of Supreme Harmony the Hall of Central Harmony, and the Hall of Preserving Harmony. Passing through this gate, it's to the inner palace area. The gate we see now is the Gate of Heavenly Purity. This is a dividing line between the front court and the inner palaces of the Forbidden City. Let's go down from here as well. We just come down from there. That's a restaurant. We want to have lunch here. It's lunch time. Let's take a break and grab something to eat. This is our lunch. You try to see how this is. It feels like it should be good. I feel like it is quite good. This is my lunch. Right. Pretty good. 
The Forbidden City is vast and might take more than a day to fully explore. Don't worry about lunch if you are visiting, as there are two restaurants to choose from. We will pick the one near the Hall of Preserving Harmony. All right, let's head back to where we were and continue exploring. 前清门 Going through this gate, we enter one of the most important palaces in the Forbidden City, the Palace of Heavenly Purity. It's the largest structure in the inner court. Initially, it served as the sleeping quarters for the emperors of the Ming Dynasty and the first two emperors of the Qing Dynasty. From the reign of the third Qing Emperor, Emperor Yongzheng, the residence was moved to the Hall of Mental Cultivation, and the Palace of Heavenly Purity was used by the Emperor for reviewing documents, meeting officials, and hosting private banquets. How you notice that tablet? To avoid disputes over succession, the emperor used to write the name of his chosen heir, place it in a small box, and hide it behind that tablet. When the emperor passed away, the box was retrieved, and the chosen heir's name was publicly announced, making them the next emperor. If we pass through this gate next to the Palace of Heavenly Purity, we will see the two palaces located behind it. The smaller one in front is the Hall of Union, and the slightly larger one behind it is the Palace of Earthly Tranquility. The Palace of Heavenly Purity, the Hall of Union, and the Palace of Earthly Tranquility. Are the three most important palaces in the inner court. Their layout is very similar to the three main halls we saw in the outer court earlier. The Hall of Union was where the empresses of the Ming and Qing dynasties received imperial greetings during major celebrations. As we walk past the Hall of Union, here we are at the Palace of Earthly Tranquility. The Palace of Earthly Tranquility was the official residence for the empresses during both the Ming and Qing dynasties. All Ming empresses lived here, and tragically, the last Ming emperors committed suicide in this palace when the dynasty fell. In the Qing Dynasty, while it remained the official residence, the Qing empresses did not live here. Instead, they chose palaces from the eastern and western six palaces. The Palace of Earthly Tranquility was used primarily as a bridal chamber for the emperor and the empress on their wedding night. Additionally, during the Qing era, it served as a venue for shamanistic rituals. At this point, we will cover the most of the buildings along the central axis of the Forbidden City. Next, let's pick one distinctive palace, each from the eastern and the western six palaces, to visit. The eastern and western six palaces are located in the inner court of the Forbidden City, with a total of twelve palaces, six on each side. Arranged along both sides of the central axis, these palaces served as the residences for the consorts during the Ming and Qing dynasties, and most Qing empresses also lived here. Let's start with the western six palaces, and we will visit the Chu Xiu Palace, 
where Empress Dowager Cixi once lived. Empress Dowager Cixi, concubine to Emperor Xianfeng and mother to Emperor Tongzhi, was never crowned queen, but became the de facto ruler of late Qing Dynasty, and one of the most powerful women in Chinese history. Chuxiu Palace was her main residence and considered by her as a palace of fortune. Not only her home, Chuxiu Palace was also where she conducted government affairs and received important guests, making it a significant site in Qing history. Look at that waist. This is Cixi's bedroom. This is where Empress Dowager Cixi gave birth to Emperor Tongzhi. This is a large water vat used for storing water. Since the Forbidden City is primarily constructed from wood, fires can easily break out. The bronze dragon statue here is quite special. Dragons, which symbolize emperors in Chinese culture, typically do not appear in consort palaces. However, its presence here signifies that Empress Dowager Cixi had risen to the very pinnacle of power, much like an emperor herself. Can you see it? Now we are heading to the Eastern Six Palaces to check out one of its most unique palaces, the Yanxi Palace. This is the Yanxi Palace. Look at it. Isn't it unique? Yanxi Gong. The first time I saw this building, I was truly amazed. Originally, Yanxi Palace matched the architectural style of the rest of the Forbidden City. However, after multiple fires, there was a plan in the late Qing Dynasty to rebuild it into a three-story Western style Crystal Palace. Due to the collapse of the Qing Dynasty and financial issues, the building was never completed, leaving it as an unfinished structure that still stands in Yanxi Palace today. This plan reflects China's admiration for Western technology and culture, and the intention to drive modernization by adopting Western ideas and technologies at that time. The space below was originally intended to hold water.
This unfinished building is like an untold story of that era, abruptly ending just like the fate of the Qing Dynasty. This is 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 the Qing Dynasty. 买上书房就买上书房，就买买买这个就可以。这个不要啊，这哪这哪是这哪笔？那买这个买这个，我最喜欢这个。最喜欢这个。嗯。This is a little souvenir shop. My mom really loves the small keepsakes and buys them wherever we go as mementos. 这是一个非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的地方，非常有趣的